Hello and welcome. I'm Hidden13. This is Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. This is Grand Arena Championships Season 7, Week 2, Round 1. I was able to go 3 0 in last week's uh, matches. And this week, I have a much tougher pod of uh, opponents, including my first opponent, Austin1636. Let's look at the matchup. As you can see, I have about a half a million more GP than my opponent. But when you look at his top 80 tunes, he actually has the advantage over me, which means he has a much more focused roster than I do. When we look at the Grand Arena stats, you can see I have uh, about 100 more offensive wins and defensive wins, but we have very similar banner numbers. Uh, and. I've got about 60, uh, 50 more zones clear than he does and rounds. To me, these numbers seem to indicate that he likes to go offensive heavy and uh, not put quite as much on defense. When we look at the relics, you'll notice he has more than me. Um, and not only are we very similar on the high end, but he has significantly more on the lower end relics than I do. Zetas, he's got two more than me, and he's got his eight advantage over me in both G11, G12, and G13 characters. But when we look at the mods, I have more 6 dot mods and uh, a bit of a speed advantage, although not at the top end. It's very close. Let's go ahead and look at the board. As you can see, he's already attacked and full cleared me. Let's take a look at uh, how my defenses did individually. In the top section, I set uh, my Nuke Squad with Zawar and Mission and one-shot that. He one-shot my Night Sisters. I put a Saj lead this time because he has a history of liking to use his uh, troopers. And my Shock T clones with R2 also one-shot. When we look at the bottom, you can see he's one-shot my Padme. And he did stumble against my Darth Revan squad. It took him two tries to get through that, which was my plan. I was hoping that would trip him up. In the back, you can see he got through my Grievous with one shot. And then my last squad was just kind of a throw together uh, leftover. I normally put Ewoks back here, but I, he has a history of using his nest solo against them, so I want to deny him banners. So Vader, IPD, Wampa, and Thrawn. My ships, uh, I just put the bugs back here, and he was able to one shot them as well. Let's take a look at what he set for me uh, a Karth squad, an Ewoks, and a Bosk Bounty Hunters, and let's go look at the bottom. He left a very tough Grievous squad and some Night Sisters. So the Grievous is the um, hardest squad, I think, so we're going to go in on that first and see if my um, EP lead with the Basila can get them down. Now. I start with my Basila Fallen, throwing out uh, Fear, and try and get stuns on him with uh, Palpatine. Go ahead and reduce uh, my cooldown there with Nihilus, and at this point I really want to get a shock on B2, but he's still not available, so I go ahead and bring him out of hiding there with Scion, and finally I'm able to put a shock on with Palpatine. I'm going to isolate Magna Guard so that uh, when he comes out of stun, he doesn't start taunting. But I lose Palpatine really early. Um, but that's okay, as long as Nihilus stays alive and I'm able to keep these guys under control to get the Annihilate off, I should be fine. Now, I just keep doing basics here because I don't want uh, to kill anybody and give Grievous another turn. I am going to fear him again, try and get people to uh, lose as many turns as possible. Uh, but beyond that, I'm just kind of bouncing around. And here is where I make a mistake. I thought Grievous had enough protection that I could go ahead and reduce cooldowns again to get my Annihilate up. But I was wrong. So when I did that um, four strain, it actually put Nihilus down below maximum health apparently by a tiny bit and he put the mark on Droidica. 
which basically screwed me for this battle. Totally huge noob mistake. I've only used this counter once before, so it was a judgment call and I judged poorly. So I went ahead and used the Annihilate because it was up and got Droidica out of there and was just hoping I would get another Annihilate up to take out Grievous. The problem was I'd been chipping away at all the other droids for so long that they uh, started to die off on me before I could get another Annihilate up. So that one mistake cost me this battle. Uh, at this point I'm just trying my hardest to get back to Grievous with another Annihilate and survive long enough um, to do that. All the while, again, just chipping away at the other guys without getting Nihilus back down uh, under protection. But unfortunately, you can see, I started killing people off. Uh, Grievous went crazy. There's still way too, another turn left on my Annihilate. I was hoping Grievous would go for Dark Basila here, but he doesn't and I am left with just Grievous to clean up. Overall, disappointing, 100% just a bad play by my part. Uh, I should have been able to get this in one go, and I didn't. So, decided to leave Grievous for uh, later, and I'm gonna go ahead and go against this Night Sisters team. And the team I really, really like to use against them is Bosk with Boba and Django. I do have Django's um, Zeta on his unique. So basically, I just get Bosk the, to taunt right away so that all the damage gets soaked on him. I do my best to get the contract done as quickly as possible because uh, once the contract's up, every time they do damage, they're healing each other like crazy. And then I just use uh, Boba Fett's Annihilate ability, his big missile, and Django to try and take out the Night Sisters. Because if I can kill him with those, then they can't revive. The one worrying thing about this particular battle is Night Sister Acolyte, because she's staying stealth the whole time, and I don't have a ton of AoE. Uh, I was really worried that Dengar, who is only gear 9 for me, would get killed off. And uh, his bombs were going to be kind of key to getting Acolyte down. Other than that, Django has the burning and Boba Fett has his ability block, um, big missile thing. Beyond that, those are my only AoEs and I had to kind of hope that that would get it done. But you can see, with the contract already out, uh, even getting Plague on, everybody uh, not a big deal at this point I'm just waiting uh, trying to not kill these night sixers off unless it's Django or it's Boba Fett's uh, third ability there and thankfully I've been able to keep Bosk taunting most of this uh, match so he's soaking up all the damage which is fantastic I would love to get him reliced up at some point so that uh, he's even harder to kill. I used to put boss bounty hunters on defense all the time, but with so many people being able to uh, trooper them or use some other uh, easy counter to get a lot of banners off of them, I started just keeping them for Night Sisters. Uh, or, you know, they can counter a couple other squads as well. You can see here, uh, at this point, I'm just hoping I can kill Acolyte. About half the match is done. She's still hiding under stealth. And so I'm just hitting mostly um, basics to try and get them uh, keep their health at maximum. So when Acolyte finally does die, um, I get full banners. So taunting, mostly basics. And then every time I have a chance to do AoEs, I do. There goes Dangar, Dangar's uh, bombs. Hopefully those will do enough. And some more burning to try and again bring down Acolyte's overall health and my big AOA with uh, Boba. And there we go. And since it was off bombs, they're not going to revive. 
and 60 banners. So I love that counter, uh, works most of the time. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and try and clean this Grievous uh, up. And I need to give a shout out and thanks to Arnold for having done this just a couple days ago. Uh, he used Ewoks to clean up a solo Grievous and I didn't realize you could do that, um, but it worked for him. So I thought I would give it a shot with my own. Uh, again, kind of lucky break for me. I usually put the Ewoks in the back on defense, but because I had seen in my opponent's history that he several time had just used Nest solo to clean up Ewoks, I decided not to put my own Ewoks on defense. Uh, and I didn't have any intention of using them on offense either. Uh, they were just a leftover squad, but this seemed like a perfect opportunity to give it a try. And lo and behold, uh, all that turn meter they gain turned out to work out well. Uh, only one of them had a little protection gone, otherwise uh, a good cleanup. So with the bottom done, let's see what we got in the back. We have a Relic Crew and a Shakti clone. So I think we're gonna leave those for later and we're gonna jump up top to take out those teams up there. So between the Karth, the Ewoks, and the Bounty Hunters, I decided to gamble and go for the Bounty Hunters uh, with my troopers. My troopers are not very good, uh, gear nine, gear 10, but my Stark is faster than every one of their Bounty Hunters, and he has IG-88 in there, who is really squishy. So I thought I'd gamble. Uh, I was worried because I had already dropped a battle against Grievous, and he had only dropped one battle. So this is kind of a gamble to uh, for the game, but I thought I could do it, and sure enough, IG-88 went down fast, which uh, just fed me that turn meter. Decided to take out uh, Boba here and saved my death mark for Bosk try and get him down a little faster and I don't think they even got a single attack off so thankfully uh, my low level troopers came through again for me with a big 60 banners okay if you've seen my videos before you know when I see Ewoks, uh, I go straight to the solo nest. I'm a little surprised that my opponent put this out there because he likes to do the same thing uh, based on his history. I've gone ahead and speed up the video. If you watch my videos, you've seen me done do this basically every time so far. Uh, one difference with this particular squad than the ones you normally see is it doesn't have low gray in it and instead has Tebow. The only annoying thing with that is that Tebow will occasionally grant other Ewoks stealth, so I can't always hit um, Elder like I want to. But the benefit is Paplu is the one with the dates, and even though my nest is super high tenacity, like 149%, she occasionally will get dazed um, just for bad RNG or whatever. And in this case, that's not going to be an issue. So. It's essentially a guaranteed win. It just might take a little longer because of the stealth. But as you can see, um, no problems. Solo nest on Ewoks is the thing. And 63 banners. So all we have left is the Karth team. And this Karth team is really well put together. All gear 12, all have their Zeta. Uh, I had a couple different options to choose from and I decided to go with my crew team um, my first order needs some work and that became very apparent in this particular match that my weaker characters, my first order stormtrooper and my first order officer um, really aren't up to snuff against a Karth team that is full gear 12 with Zetas. Uh, most people don't have full gear 12 with Zetas, usually missing a Zeta here or there, or a couple of the tunes are gear 11 or something like that. Uh, it's almost never relic. And usually when I see a Karth team, I think, well, I'm getting extra banners. I'm going to get a 61, 62. Um, but in this case, because I'm going to get to go undersized or use a CLS or something on that. But in this case, uh, with the full crew team, I was just hoping, expecting kind of to get 60, which is a usual result 
and I struggled. That was not the case at all. So you can see I'm trying my best to uh, keep passing turn meter, uh, generate turn meter with original Kylo, and I'm getting first order to try and heal up people and get uh, Fox to take people out. But Zalbar was more tanky than usual, or than the usual one I would uh, see. And I just took a long time to get anybody down. Uh, I think I probably bounced around a little too much. I targeted Candorus first, thinking he would be the easiest to get out. And I probably should have gone Karth. Uh, it just became a battle of attrition here, where I, where I kept passing it back and forth, uh, passing turn meter back and forth to Kylo and to Fox to try and get people down, and kept trying to keep the stun up with uh, crew. Zalbar continued to taunt, and at some point I think I just decided, let's just kill Zalbar. But you can see this battle is taking way longer than what your average Karth battle would take. I think it's just a matter of his gear was better than most car teams I faced, and my first order team needs some work. I probably made a bad choice here in the end because uh, I did have other squads available like Geos, um, and I think they might have been more successful than how my crew ended up doing. But finally, Zalbar goes down. I'm able to shift over and finally take Candorus out. Um, just generating turn meter, passing it over to Fox. And eventually, you, you'll see that my officer is going to get taken out here. But at this point, uh, it is over. My crew and my original Kylo have enough to get everybody down, but the banner's not pretty at all. Just Johanny here to finish up. Again, everybody on this squad is a little more tankier than I'm used to, and uh, frankly, I think I underestimated them, and it cost me quite a few banners. You see a 52. So really, really poor. With that top section finished off, let's see their ships and they put a Theron kind of throw together team. So let's go back down to the bottom and take out these teams. Uh, we're gonna start with the crew team and I've decided to take my CLS. I wasn't too worried about this match. Um, a lot of the characters on his team are going to go down really fast. Both my Han and my Chewie are relic, but both his original Kylo and his Kylo Unmask are relic, and I was a little worried about timing out on them uh, due to their health regeneration from all the debuffs. So what you're going to see is I do mostly basic moves here, uh, except for when Han gets a big hit because I'm trying really hard not to put debuffs on uh, to the Kylos. I made the mistake once of coming in against a uh, crew team with C-3PO in my group and he was just giving up so many debuffs that I eventually timed out. And I was frankly a little worried about that happening to me with uh, this squad as well. So again, other than Han's big hit, I mostly stayed to basics, trying to reduce the amount of uh, debuffs I put on crew until I could try and get him down with a big hit from Han. You can see I came close here, and I think it's almost over. Tried to end it there with a chewy smash, and that didn't work. So I'm just waiting until I get a good hit, and there Han takes it out. 60 banners, looks like old Ben had lost some protection. Our last squad we got to take out here is our Shakti clones, and I actually have my Jedi Knight Revan left over. I had kept him on offense just in case my Palpatine squad 
totally failed against Grievous that I would have a backup to try and take Grievous out. So it just worked out that I have a very strong uh, squad here to take out these clones. I'm able to get Shock T out of the way right away so they don't counter. And from then, uh, they're on out. It's just a matter of taking them out one by one. His uh, fives was Relic, and so a little tougher to chew through. But my Grandmaster Yoda and my Jedi Knight Rev Revan also have Relics. So pretty quick work. Uh, nobody gets in real danger here. Jolie gets a little bit low, and so I'm trying to heal him back up uh, to gain a little protection. But unfortunately, I'm not able to uh, heal up enough to save any banners. But 59 is still a great result. And that leaves us with just the ships. So I kept my negotiator on offense. And so I'm going to take that in. Unfortunately, my negotiator is still five stars. Working on unlocking malevolence. And because of that, I automatically lose banners coming in with the... Uh, negotiator. In retrospect, I think I probably should have just brought my Millennium Falcon fleet in. My home one is seven stars. And I kept that on offense as well. Uh, I've documented my struggles with ships before, and so I feel the need to keep both my negotiator and my Millennium Falcon squad on offense so I can shoot through squads in case they put something difficult there. But with this kind of mishmash of um, a fleet that he left, I probably been, would have been better off just to bring in my Millennium Falcon with my 7 star home 1 to get more banners. But at this point, I was pretty confident that it's if I just won, uh, if I one shot this battle, that I would win. I brought in Plode to gain back uh, health, trying to get as many banners as possible. And there's only a little bit of health there, so I decided to bring in Fives for a big hit to end it. And there we go. So 61, not great, but good enough. You can see my grand total here is 1907 for the victory. That's going to be it for this round. I want to thank Austin1636 for a great match. I want to thank everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.